Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Well today we're going to be talking about keeping it cool. I'm going to show you how I scratch build many of my radiators. I try to get as realistic a look as possible out of them. Let's have some fun. Stick around. I have been asked over the years, why do you go to so much trouble over a radiator, a part that when it's in the car, you really don't see it, which is true. But to be honest with you, the biggest reason I do it is I do it for myself. I know it's there. And of course, model building is about pleasing yourself, uh, not other people. So I enjoy doing this stuff. Each part of a model, I try to make a model by itself. So I try to make it as realistic as possible for my own satisfaction. But to that end, when I do some of my cars in, a, in an exploded way, so you can see a lot more of the detail with the engine and beside the car where it's not installed yet, and the radiator would have to be out, of course. And uh, so if it's going to be on display, you want it to look as real as you can. And um, so that's that's the reason I do this. And... Let's, let's talk about what a radiator is real quick. Well, of course, I think most of us know that it's the cooling system for the engine. Uh, and, of course, in your streetcar, it also goes back to the, uh, the heater core, so it gives you heat. But you have uh, the upper and lower tanks, and you've got the hot uh, coolant that goes in up here at the top. It runs through the coils in these fins and comes out down here back to the engine cooler. And how that happens is, of course, through the grill, you have air that flows through. And as that circulating through the here, of course, the, um, the cool air or the air hitting that cools those aluminum fins down, which cools down the coolant when it pumps it back into the engine. Uh, so it's an important part of the car. And you can totally scratch build and i'll show you a picture of a few that i've that i have scratch built radiators totally from scratch uh or you can just cut off these upper and lower tanks i like to do that and we're going to be doing that with our 40 ford uh, uh radiator today and then the lower tank and then build in here you're going to want to use this as your kind of template kind of like we did with our chassis you got to have a template for the size uh, give you an idea, this radiator is out of um, a Dodge Daytona, and here's another one that I've only done one panel, and it's the same radiator, and I cut the upper and lower tank off, built the uh, um, frame, put my radiator mesh. Now, I've only got one panel in it, so you could see through it easier, but there's another reason, and uh, what that is is on this back side here, you see the channel, which I'm going to show you all the parts here in a minute. But you see here, if I can get in the light right, you've got a little groove. So there's two panels that's going to be in there. And uh, I'll show you how we do that here in just a minute too. But we're going to start on our 40 Ford radiator. And I will show you this real quick. This is a 71 Dodge radiator. And this has all the panels through it. It's already been primed. And as you can see, it's much more dense than this, of course. But you get the idea. You've got the, the coils. And we'll get into all of this here in just a minute. But really fun stuff. Also, this technique will work for rear-end coolers, for uh, stock cars. And you're familiar with, uh, this one's out of Salvino kit, but any of the old monogram, Ravel monogram or Salvino kits have your oil cooler in them too. Same technique, and I'll show you here, you see the pictures uh, in the Superflow car of the oil cooler. And that allows you to put your other lines up here too looks really really good and here's the one that's on the Dodge Daytona adds a much more realistic look but it is also a cooling system so it's built kind of the same same technique and we'll get into I'll show you a picture of the a rear end cooler here with a mesh in it where you see the uh, uh, 
screen in that. I was trying to think of the name of the squirrel cage. Uh, anyway, the, the fan. <laughs> um, but let me grab together all of the materials we'll need and we'll get started. Stick around. I failed to mention a while ago, you can also do this for 18-wheeler, um, any kind of semi-coolant system. You can do the same thing with them. But we're going to be just looking at the uh, automotive. But this, this uh, Evergreen Channel comes in just tons of sizes, so not really a problem there. Well, what we're going to be using for this particular radiator, since we're going to be making the, let me get this out of the way here, the 40 Ford, um, the parts we're going to be needing, and I, and I put one extra out here just to show you for a race car, it's a little bit different. Um, we're going to be using Evergreen Channel, and let me get a small piece out here, and you can see the channel I hope you can anyway. That's in there. Let me take the camera down here, get a little bit closer. Um, well, maybe I'm a little too close, but you see there, it's a uh, a channel. Well, I hope you can see it anyway. Anyway, uh, for a standard automotive radiator, I use uh, the Evergreen number 262, which is 80 thousandths. And let me put my camera back up here, and I'll show you why, in particular, that one. If you uh, take, like, most all these radiators, if you take and measure them, you're going to see that they're 80 thousandths. So, and of course, if you just want to test fit it, butt it up to it. As you see, it's exactly the right width. So this is going to be the channel. We're going to build a box that's going to hold our radiator face plates down in it. And if you're using a race car, let's let's grab this uh, NASCAR one here. They're bigger, heavier duty radiator. And for those, I use the channel. 263. Now, by the way, that's 80 thousandths in the 262 and 100 thousandths in the 263. And you'll see with this one, that's where your width comes in for the stock car. A little bit bigger. And, oh, I mentioned too, if you're doing a two-panel radiator, you're going to want to use, uh, to build that channel down in between uh, to hold the pieces apart. I think it's evergreen, yeah, evergreen number 131, and it's 30 by 30 thousandths. And that just glues right down the center, and then you put that in there. The other thing you're going to need, I use just a good wire mesh. This one is from uh, Model Car Garage, but if you, you can get it other places. Um, but you'll need that. If you're going to do a three-panel, kind of like what we showed you on this one, um, you'll want to... Uh, use a third panel in the center and you won't need that channel I just told you about <laughs> but we'll get into that and the most important thing is going to be detail master number 2490 and this is radiator faceplate and you see in this picture up close and let's see if I can do that with this one well you see in the picture up close it has those uh, fins that are radiator shaped just like a, uh, any other radiator and uh, gives it a really realistic look. Now, I will say this. When you're priming and painting these, do if you're using a rattle can, do it at a long distance. Stay way back because you can clog these things up. I've got a 49 Mercury around here somewhere. Here we go. That I uh, got a little overzealous, and this was even with the airbrush. And you can see in a couple of spots. Let me put some paper behind it. You can see in a couple of spots where the I'm going to have to take a straight pin and kind of push through. And that's double paneled. Uh, but you can see a couple of spots here and up here where I got a little too much paint. And it kind of clogged it up. But like I said, a straight pin will, will just pop that right out. Uh, just be careful when you're pushing on it. And that's a, a dual panel. And by the way, the reason I did this one as a dual panel is because behind it is going to be, and we're going to get into the fans and stuff later, but I'm going to have um, an electric fan attached behind this. 
So uh, you want to be able to, when you look through the grill, if you've got a, a photo etch grill, you want to be able to see that going to the engine. It really looks cool. Really looks cool. Like I said earlier, a lot of people don't even notice that kind of stuff, but I know it's there. Um, but the radiator face plate will be on the front and back of our radiator when we build our, uh, our box there for it. And between the two will be, again, this mesh. So that's the stuff we're going to be needing. Of course, we'll need our X-Acto, um, need our dial caliper or our Murphy's Rule, either one. Um, I, you all know me by now. You know that I like using the dial caliper. But when it, it's important when you get the radiator, you want everything to be the right size. So what I want to do is I want to take the radiator, and I'm going to uh, use my mechanical pencil here. And, by the way, it's important, too, that you make note of where these little dog ears, these attachment points, are going to sit down on the chassis. It's really important that you keep those, uh, the position of them, anyway. And so what I want to do is I want to trace as closely as I can the radiator and by the way, the filler tube for the radiator, you notice I've removed. I'm going to be adding that back, and we're going to be using a photo etch um, radiator cap. All right. Okay. So there is our size of our radiator. When I finish this, what I want to be able to do is lay that right back down on that with the new inside and it needs to fit. That way I know the fit into the car is going to be exactly the same. Uh, so we're going to lay that aside and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a strip of aluminum or metal in, in the real radiator that runs right down the center on both sides. If you wanted to replicate that, now since I'm upgrading it a little bit, I'm going to put the brass upper tank on it, and then the rest of it will be black. But uh, if you wanted to replicate that, it's not a problem. Get you some five thousandths, which is like paper thin, a uh, sheet of evergreen or plastruct, they do make it, and just cut you a thin strip and run it right down through there. Because I'm going to have an electric fan on the side of this one too, um, being kind of a custom car, um, I'm not going to add it, but you can. We will be using the upper tank though. So let's go ahead and get this thing cut apart and we'll get going. Okay, to cut this top tank off, I'm just going to take my X Acto and scribe it right along the tank line. Hope I'm not in the way there. I think I am. Let's see if I can do it this way. Right there at the tank. And I'm going to do this on both sides. I could use the chopper, but I've got to level it up, and I find this a whole lot quicker. And, well, I don't know about quicker, but it is easier. As you can see, I'm probably halfway through this thing. Yep, a little over halfway. Wow. We'll go to the other side now and make a few scores. We should be there. Oh, almost. Here we go. Now this we're going to want to use too. I'm going to clean up these edges here just a touch because this is going to be the size of our, our radiator face itself. So that's going to be the size we're going to use. And we'll clean up this uh, upper tank here just a little bit with uh, our file or sanding stick. 
I don't want to take too much, just want to get it nice and smooth. And I want to make sure that it's sitting level. Yeah. Um, now, when we're cutting our, uh, get my finishing sanding stick here. Get that nice and smooth. That way that glue will bond nice and easy to that. And I apologize, guys. I have a bad habit. My wife and my brother always tell me, man, you're off camera again. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm looking at what I'm doing and apparently not paying attention to the camera. So my apologies there. I'll, I will try to do better there. All right. And here I'm doing it again. Okay, so there's our tank. Sitting nice and level. So we know that's ready to go. So we're going to clean this up just a touch on the top. Don't need to do much because we're not going to be using this part. But it's still very important that we remember where these two pieces are. And um, let's get our... Uh, channel out here and that is the 80 thousandths number 262 the one we measured up on it earlier i got a couple of smaller pieces here i'm going to use too um and here's the great thing when you're doing this it can rock along kind of quick because the upper and the lower are going to be exactly the same size and you can lay that kind of in the channel and then cut that let's see we'll lay that right there get it right to the exact size and then we're just gonna pop that and we'll make another one for the upper side that's gonna be exactly the same size and I could have taken the chopper out for this. It would have been, I guess, a little bit quicker. All right. Okay. Now there's our upper and lower. Now we're going to do the sides. As you can see, this really is not that hard at all. And I have, by the way, taken, in fact, I'll do that right now, cut this in half. And I'll put this one here and this one here. Line them up on this nice and straight. And get my Murphy's rule here to get them nice and butted up to each other. Well, I thought I did. Forgive the awkward silence. There we go. Now we're going to get here. We're going to put this to the exact length we're going to need. And by the way, this can't. This same uh, radiator stuff can be done with brass, uh, brass channel. Um, it's a little more work, and I like using the uh, plastic because I can control. If I wanted to round a corner, it's a whole lot easier to do it with uh, plastic um, than it is with brass. But I have done it, soldered up brass before too. Okay, there's our sides. And as you can see, it's pretty much, without the tank, we're looking at uh, the height. Oh, 
is eight point almost eight and a half and the width is about or excuse me that was nine and a half eight and three quarter so now all we have to do is build our box and we've got our channel and I'm going to be doing uh, a three panel on this one and what I mean by that is you'll have a front and back um, of the radiator face plate and in the middle between the two is going to be the mesh um, even though I'm going to have a fan on it I for this one I want to do it this way um, that way I don't have to build that that uh, 30 by 30 thousandths little uh, channel between or lay that in there between them and then slide the two panels in um, I want this to have again this look which you'll still be able to see the fan through it um, but I want it to have more of this look and uh, I got to throw a little mud right down there uh, down here but that's not a big deal I, this is just roughed in right now anyway um, not a bad looking radiator though and like I said that's for a 71 charger I'm working on too um, all right let me go ahead and get this thing together and then we'll start uh, putting our stuff in it Okay, so we've got everything. Here's our original radiator tank area. And I've gone ahead and cut the mesh for the center. And as you can see, that just lays right dead on top of it. And each of our panels, the front and rear of the radiator face, the Detail Master radiator face plate, right to the size. And I always double check everything. And so we know that that's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our radiator face plate and we're going to lay that over that fine mesh and again you can see we still can see through it and then we're going to put a panel behind that so and and once again as you can see well you can see right through it there but it gives it a good realistic look now well, all we get out to do is let me get my optimizer down here now make sure I got all that in the right direction yes indeed and now we're going to slide that right down in our channel well if I can keep it together This is, for me, the hardest part is getting it down in the channel because the channel, even though it's glued together and it's pretty set, is still a little bit you know, wonky until you get that top part on there. Yeah, get it started on one side. There we go. Now we're just going to slide right down in the channel until it's seated in the bottom. And as you can see, we have our radiator. Now all we have to do is glue, glue our top pieces on here. I'm going to test fit everything real quick. Yeah, we're looking good. 
and do your best not to get any glue into the uh, weaving otherwise when you paint that's going to be uh, a little bit of an issue so I always start here and just a touch and I mean a touch I probably should be using the uh, Tamiya extra thin right here um, but it doesn't take much and I'll round the edges or excuse me do the edges with that a little bit later all right I'm going to get this on one end first and then we're going to come over here and do the other side well that would be a little wonky on me there we go and now i will touch these corners with a little bit of uh to me extra fine and then I'm going to make sure everything is nice and squared up. I think I was a little too close to the camera there. The other reason I like doing this with plastic versus brass, uh, for me anyway, it's a personal preference. Uh, I've done them both ways. Is if I wanted to round, you know, like some of the radiators along the bottom edges and stuff have the kind of rounded edges as you see here, I can take a lot easier uh, some sandpaper or file and um, cut that over to that. There we go. And I am going to take just a touch of my Tamiya. And get in these joints a little bit. I've got one, oops, that I knocked loose there. There we go. I'm sorry if I'm off camera again. That's just one of those curses that I face there. But And of course you can see that our tank is going to go right on there. And remember when we did the, uh, the little ears out here where the, uh, the mounting brackets are? We can either cut these off and glue them in the same locations. What I'll do is I'll mark this where it needs to go. And we'll go from there. Uh, that way it just drop right in. And i still got to put some more of that cement on there real quick, but let me do this. You know, I told you uh, we should be able to drop this right in there on our uh, original template, and you see there it is. And the, where the little uh, dog ears there for the mounting bracket goes. And when we put our top on it, and of course I'm not going to glue that quite yet until everything else is set. And there you go nice perfect fit now if you wanted to add make this a little bit shorter along the bottom shorten this up move it up a little bit and put a tank on the bottom you can do that uh it's your model you can do whatever you want so <laughs> um because of the way i'm going to have this displayed i did not do a tank on the bottom i usually like a tank on the bottom and a lot of these flatheads you had the two that came up up out of the engine and then the two that came straight back into the block from the bottom uh, this is going to be more of a display thing. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. And you know what? I may go ahead and add just a tank onto the bottom of that. Um, in fact, I think I might. Yeah, anyway, but this is how I make the radiators. Now, the rear end cooler you'll see in this picture, I just used a regular hole punch to uh, punch that out. But you can also get from Micromark a punch set for different types of... Uh, um round and man they are they work beautifully but uh there's our radiator i'm going to go ahead and get some glue on it uh in the kind of tighten up some spots here and there and then we're going to get some primer on it and um after i get the primer on it uh we'll go ahead and get some paint on it show you how we miss that stuff on there so we don't uh clog up anything uh, that's one thing you don't want to do is get anything clogged up but it's really important right here to while this is drying put it on something nice and flat and i will probably put a paint bottle on it just to make sure it stays flat 
you know how sometimes you can scratch build, you can glue stuff together and it'll want to warp or bow a little bit. So um, typically I'll, I'll let it sit about two hours and then we'll get some primer on it and some paint. Stick around. Okay, guys, while we're waiting for the primer to dry on our radiator, I want to talk about fans for just a minute. Now, you've got fans that attach to the engine, which you see here. These are Detail Master and Model Car Garage. Just a couple of examples. And they're, they're really, <laughs> they really are sharp fans. Uh, and you've also got the electric fans, and you see these are Detail Master and uh, Model Car Garage as well. And uh, they look good. Here's the Detail Master on uh, one of my NASCAR radiators. And I think this thing really turned out well. I, I hooked the little electric stuff with the plugs on the ends of the wires and all that stuff to it. Uh, I enjoy doing this stuff, if you can't tell. <laughs> also, what I have here is from Model Trains, uh, specifically HO. But if you wanted to do the dual fans, uh, you know, some of the radiators that have the dual fan sets, you can get those in N-gauge, and uh, they're perfect. It's the same stuff. It's just a little bit smaller scale, so you can do duals. I like the HO myself, and um, as you can see, this is uh, Smoky Mountain Railroad products, and yeah, I think you can see that. These things are really, really sharp. Usually when I use this one, I leave this black uh, because it's usually like a black plastic cover. And then I uh, prime and paint the fan itself in a metallic, like an aluminum or something like that. And this just snaps on the back and you've got the little uh, snap-on nut down here that snaps right over it. And uh, it fits... Hold on here just a second. Here is that... Uh, 71 charger radiator and if you were going to upgrade as you can see that fits right on it and it's easy to make the brackets for these things too real easy out of just some a piece of aluminum but it attaches right on it and let's see if i can get it on here where you can see it yeah you can see the the fan right through the radiator and a really good little set here. And I think this thing was like $4, which is cheaper than Photo Etch. And it looks really good. And this one is by uh, Canon and Company, Diesel Components. And this is $6.95, and it's got two full fan sets. And this is in HO. And you can see the screen. Let me get this out of the way. I think you can see it better. You can see the screen, the fans, the blades. Uh, you can cant those a little bit. Um, you've got different setups as far as the rings go. This one you might be better off with that. And the mounting brackets. Just really good looking stuff so there's a lot of stuff out there available and by the way while you're at the train store look at everything you're going to be surprised at the treasure that you'll find in a train store for just all kinds of stuff um and like i said this well let's see yeah you can see there if i can get the light right and then the fans, of course, all of that stuff looks really, really sharp through there. So there's just tons of stuff you can do, and you can save some money while you're at it uh, with the train stuff. Uh, but don't get me wrong, I used the Detail Master and the Model Car Garage before, and it is top-notch, really, really good stuff. Okay, let's get back to this radiator. Hopefully it'll be dry here in just a minute. Our primer is dry, turned out really, really well. Um, the primer, by the way, I use is, to me, is fine surface primer. The fine primer is a really fine mist. I, I like using it in both the white and the gray. And as you can see, we can still see right through that radiator, even with a coat of primer on both sides. And I did get a little close once, uh, apparently, and I got a couple of little spots uh, kind of filled in. But I just took a straight uh, sewing needle and just 
touched both spots and boom, it was gone just that quick. So it's an easy fix, but just again, be careful when you're uh, spraying it. There's a couple of little spots here and here, here and there, excuse me, that I've got to uh, clean up a little bit. Uh, of course, that first primer coat is usually going to show stuff like that anyway. So I'm going to get some sanding done, another coat of primer on it, and then I'm going to shoot the color on it, and we'll be right back. Well, guys, our radiator is finished. Let's grab this. Yeah, let's grab this right here. As you can see, you can see it's still see-through it, so we'll be able to see that fan. And we'll also be able to see the front end of that engine, that red engine block that I'll have in the uh, 40 Ford as well. But as you can see, well, I don't know why I still have that. Take a toothpick out there. As you can see, you got a good slick finish on it. Um... And I'm actually thinking, next time you see this radiator, it may not be. I was going to do the brass tank top, but I, in that this is a semi-show car type thing, I'm thinking about doing the entire radiator in polished aluminum or aircraft aluminum. Uh, something that will have a polished look to it. But um, I think it turned out well. You can see where the, uh, the locators are, the little ears there, where it will sit back in the chassis and uh, I've already test fit it to the chassis, it worked great. And you know, when we started, I showed you where I had cut the filler tube off, which you can see where it is there now. And uh, that's what I had my toothpick stuck in. But the reason I do that, and what I replace it with, by the way, is a piece of 75,000 stainless steel tube. And um, the reason I do that is I have done this before, and, and you can do it for a diorama or or just a, a, a roadside scene, but I'll have the radiator cap, as you can see it down in there, laying over on under the hood somewhere or on the top of the radiator over here, and take you a, a couple of drops of white paint, well, not a couple of drops, but just a half a drop, drop it down in there, then get some fluorescent green antifreeze of course some fluorescent green paint and put a little bit on the end of a toothpick and just drop it on there most fluorescent paints are flat colored so get you some uh, i have used nail polish before too um but a good fluorescent green or if you want to use blue whatever but uh that way you can see a little antifreeze in there just a little bonus there um but I, like I said, I'm thinking next time you see this, when I do the last update on the 40 Ford, it may be polished aluminum or aircraft aluminum. Um, but that's all there is to it, guys, as far as making a more realistic radiator. And uh, give it a try. It's really not that hard. It's a little finicky getting the uh, screens down in there at first, but it's really, you saw how quick I ended up doing it, even with fiddling with it a little bit. So, um uh, Gives a really good look, and uh, here's a couple of shots of some of the finished radiators. This is the one from the Daytona, of course, and I went ahead and added the hoses. The clamps for the hoses are from, uh, I can't remember if it's Detail Master or Model Car Garage. It's one of the two, uh, but, but era uh, correct hoses, and also... This is the one for the uh, Superflow Lumina. And um, the decals, by the way, the, the CNR decals for the radiator, all you do for those is it's from a Slicks goodies sheet. You lay that over the radiator and saturate it with either Mark Fit or, um, uh, I think I use Solve a set on that one, but Mark Fit decal solution is perfect for that. Um, I think Microsoft, Microset, uh, Microsoft probably would do just as well. But what it does is just soak it on there and walk away. It will suck those decals in there, and it'll look like it's been stenciled on and painted on like you see on these real ones here. Um, but it gives you a really, really great, great effect. Um, scratch building a radiator, no problem. you got plenty of sheet plastic you can and, and a couple of files. You can carve out whatever you want, make your screen like the one uh, for the Superflow car there. And um, that's all there is to it, guys. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this. I hope you've, it's helped. Um, but this is the way I do it. And by all means, guys, if you have anything 
that you do that is unique, hey, I'm all ears. I'll, I enjoy learning stuff. from. It doesn't matter who it's from <laughs> uh, all the time. So uh, I'm, I'm open to hear it. So uh, if you liked it and you haven't subscribed, please do. If you really want to help this channel or any channel that you frequent out, you start off by giving us a subscription. When you do that, uh, you can help the channel grow. Of course, it helps us. And to be quite honest with you, it's very encouraging for us to keep on going when you like something that you see there. Guys, thank you again so much. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.